Mr. President. The Senator from New Jersey is ready. I thank my distinguished colleague from California for yielding time and for her advocacy here. Uh, I rise today in support of the cross-state air pollution rule that protects downwind eastern states like New Jersey from upwind power pollution plants' dirty air. And I rise in defense of the lies and the breathable air of the people of New Jersey, all 9 million plus. Last week, I asked the governor of my state to join this fight. After all, this rule is supported by the New Jersey Chamber of Commerce and our largest utility because it's good for business. They know it's only fair to level the playing field for New Jersey businesses since we have already substantially cleaned up our electric generation facilities. We're meeting our obligations. And the rule is supported by just about everyone in the public health community because it will save an estimated 1,200 lives per year in New Jersey beginning in 2014. Nationally, it will save up to 34,000 lives, prevent 400,000 asthma attacks, and avoid 1.8 million lost sick days per year starting in 2014. And the economic benefits of this rule are estimated to reach anywhere from $120 billion to $280 billion each year. So, Mr. President, we're all focused like a laser beam on the economy as we should be, on jobs and its creation, as we should be, on reducing deficits and looking at the bottom line. But this rule doesn't f create uh, or force a choice between trying to grow this economy, creating jobs, and reducing deficits. It's a good rule for the economy. It's a good rule for the health and well-being of Americans, particularly those downwind from the toxic emissions of power plants. Let's be clear, Mr. President, corporate coal power plants enjoy an enormous subsidy that we are trying to repeal with this rule. Those polluters can prematurely end 34,000 lives per year and not have to pay anything for that loss, not have to pay anything for the health care costs of all of those who are afflicted at the end of the day by this dirty air. But yet that cost is uh, borne by all of us at the end of the day. To put 34,000 lives in perspective, that is almost as many American lives as are claimed by breast cancer every year. So I ask my colleagues to join with me and others in voting against the Paul Resolution. It is a vote for saving 34,000 lives per year. I mean, there are a few times in this chamber where you can actually cast a vote that will save a life. And this is one of those moments. Vote for over $120 billion in economic benefits. Voting for cleaner air. Let us bequeath to future generations of Americans not air in our nation that is dirty, but air that is cleaner. And a vote for keeping our children healthy. You know, the number of asthma attacks that grow in this country is enormous. Certainly in my home state, respiratory ailments are on the rise. The last thing that we need to do is to nullify the ability to create cleaner air at the end of the day. It's a time for us to all see this as an opportunity to uh, uh, ultimately make a difference. And it's a time for us all to see this disapproval resolution for what it is, a pass for polluting industries that make us sick without paying for the costs it creates. To me, that's the ultimate corporate welfare. So let us join together in defeating a short-sighted resolution. With that, Mr. President, I yield back uh, the balance of my time to the senator from California, and I yield the floor.